while using technology to reduce barriers to trade. The need to protect our countries from cyber crime, terrorism, and the money laundering through the use of ICT remains essential. We need each other as African regulators. We need to collaborate. We need to work together in this ever-changing technological world. In order for you to have a resilient digital ecosystem, three things need to happen. Firstly, you need an enabling environment. Secondly, you need strong institutions, both in the public and in the private sector. And then thirdly, you need digitally savvy citizenry, people who use the digital ecosystem so that they create and generate demand for the ecosystem. With this new strategy, we aim to prioritize cross-border projects and make a great impact on the digital transformation of our beloved African continent. It is, however, imperative to ensure the digital transformational integration of the continent of Africa. If you are just tuning in, you are most welcome. It is uh, the uh, Pan-African debate. I think uh, we are going to dive straight away, uh, uh, Pufong Javerns, with the analysis regarding a topic for discussion. Today, we are looking at how uh, new technologies or existing technologies can foster the uh, uh, economic transformation of the continent of Africa. But then before we look at the, the role it can play, let's understand uh, holistically what uh, technology is all about and uh, the imperative nature of these uh, new technologies in uh, helping the stakeholders fast-tracking the economic uh, trajectory or uh, development of the continent Africa. Uh, I think when we talk about uh, technology, we are just talking about uh, easy or uh, 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 more advanced methods of uh, handling or, or treating situations uh, different from that which has been in the past, just like the industrial uh, evolution that came and then was meant to maybe transform uh, manual production into the use of machines. That was a technological constraint. And uh, when we are looking about uh, when we are talking about the technology in Africa and how technology can uh, uh, afford uh, or can contribute to the development of the African continent the first thing we have to look for, look into as a people is the position of the African continent on the technological evolution table are we on the table as consumers so we are on the table as producers of uh, technology because if we are actually on the table as consumers it poses more of a threat than when we are on the table as a product uh, as producers of technology from those very remarks uh, that came up from Victoria Island in Zimbabwe, I think I heard the president of uh, uh, Malawi making the point or stating it clearly that uh, we need to know what we are supposed to do or that particular aspect of technology we need to dive into. And I think that that is what the leadership of Africa has to look into because the first thing now is that Africa thinks about technology. We talk about technology on a daily basis. We believe that technology is that uh, thing that has been there or is coming to completely transform the image of Africa but now if we don't know what we are going to contribute in technological evolution as a continent then there is absolutely nothing or maybe we will not benefit from technology the way we are portraying it we will only act as a market for all the countries to market their technological products and i'm scared to say that that is so far what we are realizing as far as technology is concerned as an african continent and if it's happening that the other continents or maybe different countries are using africa as a marketing tool to distribute their technology then we cannot actually see that it is creating a huge positive impact in africa because it will have just maybe two or three, four or five reasons that we, we, we will account to us benefiting from it. But now we will have major issues we have to address, such as capital flight and uh, maybe... Uh, 
maybe brain draining, which is the apex of the times we are facing now in Africa. So now, how can technology actually promote or foster sustainable development in Africa? When we look at that, we want to see how it, uh, Africa can evolve education, uh, educationally to ensure that Africans become the producers of technology. If to say we are evolving educationally to see how we can produce, te uh, produce technology for the consumption of Africa to advance our economy, we are looking for do at those sectors, we are looking at those sectors in Africa that maybe an evolution or maybe a transformation can put us at a limelight to, 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 to maybe compete uh, with others. For example, if we look at education and how we can maybe evolve technologically in agricultural sector in such a way that we can bring in technological advancement in the agricultural sector that can put us on the limelight with maybe the Middle East or other continents that are doing very well in agriculture, then at the level of the world market we'll be able to determine the impact that our uh, technological evolution is actually being created, create, creating in Africa. If not so, other countries who advance in technology, other continents who advance in technology, they will come back to Africa to replicate their model in Africa and maybe uh, uh, transport our resources to their own continents, maybe process them, they come back to sell to us and then take the money back to their countries, which is actually posing as a great threat to the African continent now. And then when we look at um, when we look at the, the role or maybe the, 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 the leadership, the role of the African leadership in technological advancement, we'll see that as a continent, our leaders actually set out wonderful goals, extremely good goals, as far as technology technology is concerned, but when it comes to the level of implementation, our uh, implementation, as I always say, ends at the level of documenting it. We don't realize 1% of the implementation. And then, if you look at the Western world and then comparing it to Africa, you will see that technology has actually come technology in Africa is posing a problem. We are talking about technology in a, in a continent that has a high rate of, uh, of unemployment. Then technology in the Western world comes to solve the problem of overemployment, multiple jobs. But now in Africa it is coming to take away jobs from people that don't even have jobs. So now strategy becomes an issue which I think that it is a call for concern for the entire African continent to see the strategies to act actually navigate through this evolution and then probably benefit from it. Nevertheless, in as much as technology is something very good, but we as a continent has a lot to do to benefit from the advantages of technology. If not so, we will see that it will pose a lot of threats than advantages as we move towards the future. In, in data uh, perform terrorism, it is always imperative, of course, uh, to take uh, the positive aspect of it. Uh, you quite mentioned uh, the already some challenges uh, that uh, uh, Africa is actually facing uh, due to the uh, advancement uh, in uh, technology. We cannot even forget cyber criminality uh, that is on the rise across African, uh, the African uh, continent. Of course, we're going to analyze detail into that. But then let's go to the U.S. to meet uh, uh, Mr. Vicker to understand, to get his own holistic uh, understanding of uh, the uh, uh, the term technology and how uh, these uh, new technologies can help extract uh, the uh, uh, transformation of uh, the continent Africa, which is the plight of every African in today's okay. world. <clears throat> Thank you so much for, for, for giving me this opportunity. Um, first of all, I, I think it's important that we 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 uh, make clear uh, some of the terms that we're using uh, there is there is a digital transformation uh, in the context of africa and this simply refers to you know the process of leveraging um, digital technologies to transform various aspects of um, the african society this includes the economy this includes governance education and social interactions so this this includes also the use of digital um, technologies such as smartphones so when you talk of computers when you talk of the internet and all of these communication means to increase um, efficiency and drive innovation in different sectors so the digital revolution is is uh, transforming africa in many ways this includes enabling e-commerce creating new jobs 
improving access to education and health care, promoting good governance, digitalization, has really helped to connect rural, rural communities, right, to um, the wider world, to the global market, and so on and so forth. And, and when you're talking about technology, these new trends, these this new um, ideas, so technology is, is all about, um, you know, a process that helps us transform something, a process that helps us, um, you know, be smart, right? So if you're talking about in, uh, information technology, it's all about how information is processed, how that information is processed, how what the components uh, that make up that, that process. But if we're talking about technology in general, there are different types of technologies. And these in the context of Africa, I mean, right? So when you're talking of new technologies, you could be talking of uh, computing technologies like cloud computing. You could be talking about storage capabilities. You could be talking about different types of uh, technologies. There is AI. Um, I'm sure many of us are aware of, of chat GPT and, and so much more in the, in the AI world. That is uh, artificial intelligence. This is just a way that computers um, are able to process information just as a human being would, uh, right? So there is there is also blockchain this is another uh, interesting technology that has come to help um you know transform africa in terms of uh, uh maybe banking uh food trans uh, transformation food supply uh, and all the, the processes that are involved in the agricultural sector uh there is technology when we're talking about capabilities of communication so you can see we are we are talking uh um, in the US and we're able to communicate uh, this is uh, you know this means that we're using is all technologies new technology and we can talk of social media you can see the effect of social media uh, in 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 Africa there are people making millions of US of dollars right of US dollars uh, just sitting in their homes in the comfort of their homes and they're able to use their voices use their talent um, you know to 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 gain a, a living to make a, a real living out of you know just just what technology is uh, offering people so technology is basically um you know that that computing uh, mechanism that people could use to transform the way they normally would do um you, things traditionally for instance uh transportation for instance um in in manufacturing uh, there is robotics right uh, these are new technologies that are taking over industries and africa is a little bit lacking when it comes to some of this and i believe that africa is the heart is the heart of technology uh in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years, in the next 30 years. Why do I say so? Because Africa has the data. Africa has the talents. But uh, we are lacking in terms of harnessing these opportunities, harnessing this this data, um, um, making this uh, talent useful, directing this uh, talented energy to uh, resources that would help Africa transform. So these are some of the limitations that we currently have. There are limitations also in, in terms of uh, policy making, right? Uh, making the right decisions, giving uh, the, the favorable environment for entrepreneurs, for technologists to come in and say, hey, this is how things are done. This is the way uh, we can store data. This is the way we can transform data to be able to get more information from that data. Because technology deals with data. You cannot um, divide or separate technology from data. Data is the heart of technology. Technology is built on data. It's about data transformation, such that data can be used to to uh, make decisions. So the insight that uh, people get from, from data uh, or leaders, uh, business leaders, organizational leaders, the insights that they get from get from this data can be used to, um, you know, to, to transform uh, decision making, to make decision making a lot more, um, you know, a lot more targeted and not just, you, you know, you know a general kind of decision making. That's one thing that Africa lacks in terms of decision making, in terms of policies that can help um, people be able to use technology effectively these are um, uh, limitations but africa is very talented and the educational sector which um the the, the first uh, speaker mentioned is is absolutely important we cannot uh, talk about technology in africa and transformation without talking about um, uh, 
you know education the way we train our technologists matter it's all about practical skill sets that are able to help people uh, perform right it's not technology is not uh, a general idea you have to be practical you have to know what you're doing and so africa needs those particular skill sets uh, that will help them harness the beauty of technology if we talk about cloud computing for instance it's all about storage it's all about creating resources in in the cloud you can sit wherever you are in in, in the comfort of your room and you're able to run a company uh, you know, from wherever you are, provided you have a computer and provided you have internet connectivity. So decision making and uh, as relates to, you know, to to uh, uh, some of these new technologies is important, as well as uh, decision making as far as education is concerned, as relates to uh, technology that will trans transform Africa. Uh, these are very, very important um, things that need to be taken into consideration. Uh, very important things that stakeholders across the continent uh, need to take into consideration if we actually uh, want uh, to evolve uh, with the changing uh, technological trends and of course uh, uh, have the, the positive uh, view of this. Uh, while talking, uh, uh, Mr. Vicu uh, mentioned something which I want you to elaborate on uh, Mr. Pufong Jurens talking about of course the available uh, opportunities that uh, technology uh, brings but then uh, there is something you know the potentials are there and we have seen in the preamble that technology has a lot or new technologies has a lot as far as unpacking or unlocking africa's potentials as concerned but then uh, the, the key issue which he mentioned was the the, the capital human capital development but then now uh, we know this is a, a positive aspect so how then maybe it, it, it will go online with the uh, education uh, the educational sector how can we train uh, the the vibrant and the young african population that will commensurate uh, the opportunity that uh, the, this technological uh, innovations uh, bring in present day society because we are talking about uh, technology which will enhance maybe diversification of uh, economy uh, economies across Africa new innovations but then uh, is the human capital ready to commensurate these uh, opportunities that are the, the uh, chance uh, chances in the labor markets it's here clearly is that uh, the African continent needs to be very practical uh, practical when it comes to the educational system because one of the things you agree with me about the educational system of Africa is that it focuses on one thing how to read and how to write the uh, and we know how important education, uh, how important information is. Most of the African graduates or the African students don't even know that such or some of these opportunities exist. Or maybe technology is actually providing such uh, platforms for them to excel or for them to manifest. It's very common in a country like Cameroon if you announce that you are hosting a Zoom call, most of the students. At the level of the university are asking you how zoom works they're asking you how specific platforms work which shows that our educational system is so, our curriculum is so tilted in such a way that in as much as we are clamoring for technology we are not actually making those that are involved in the educational process to understand how those uh, technological tools are supposed to be used for uh, the positive uh, development of our country, country and continent at large. So I think we need to be very practical when it comes to technological evolution and the implementation on the African continent. We should expand our curriculum in such a way that will permit our education our uh, educational uh, 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 educational bosses yeah. to maybe transform the things that are needed to actually advance the lives of our students uh, as far as technology is concerned technological tools should actually be included in our curriculum to make our students understand that maybe if you use this particular uh, platform for example 
if you are good in communication maybe you can engage in youtubing if you are good maybe in uh, whatever maybe this is a platform you should actually evolve your skills in then we will actually see that it's having a direct positive impact on the African continent but if we keep on singing the song of maybe technology is coming to transform Africa we will sing the same song that we sang when the, during the time of the in industrial uh, uh, revolution, revolution yeah. that the continent will be transformed and to date we are still complaining of uh, lack of industries or we are still complaining of a general backdrop in far as industrialization is concerned in the African continent the only way that we can actually really push the agenda of technology in Africa is to make sure that we understand that yes there are technological tools and there, there, there is a possibility of using these technological tools and there is also a possibility of monetizing the technological tools. The, 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 the highest thing very common or the highest idea that an average African understands is that maybe when it concerns Facebook, the only thing to do there is to send friend requests, chat with people. They don't understand that it can be used as a tool for advertisement or maybe monetizing whatever the thing you are doing or promoting your Absolutely. talents there you know that the major thing is maybe communication making new friends or uh, interacting and with people from to different what we call selective uh, perception how absolutely. we react we, to these innovations to these changes absolutely we become so selective yeah. then we don't know that maybe an aspect youtubing is a whole career on its own mm -hmm. that somebody can maybe build a future from but now in africa we know that it's a platform simply to go and stream uh, uh, videos maybe you spend your data you're spending money enriching those that you're streaming their videos mm -hmm. and also enriching the person that has created that too That's so right. now we have a problem in Africa that that particular transformation or transferring of knowledge of how we can ben benefit mm -hmm. from those tools is is really lacking and it's posing a big problem to us as a continent so I think that when we are talking about those technological tools we should should be focused on how to educate our people on how to benefit from it in Africa you see many people with YouTube channels but they actually don't make any money from there you see somebody having a YouTube channel of about 5,000 10,000 followers but the person don't know what it takes to monetize a YouTube channel so you see that the our educational system is somehow lacking as far as we are supposed to benefit from these tools and those are things we should critically take a look at if to say that we want to push Africa ahead and actually enjoy that, that, that the platform that technology is presenting to us as a continent. Which is very imperative. Uh, just to remind I think, our I viewers think, uh, tuning in uh, uh, that this is the Pan-African uh, debate on African media. We're going to continue with uh, the analysis uh, with uh, Mr. Viku. Uh, you wanted to say something. You can go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's absolutely important what uh, Gerard just said there. Um, education is is really a very critical component of of the way um, Africa would uh, transform its its digital economy. Right? Um, uh, I've been in the training space for some time, and it's 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 a critical component. So, take for instance, somebody graduates from from the university as a computer scientist and the person does not know how what cloud computing is all about the person does not know how to write a python script the person does not know how to write a javascript these are programs these are basic things that you do in computer science um, uh, a person graduates from information technology and they don't understand they have limited understanding of the various tools that are available um, you know uh, out there that they can use for uh, cyber security uh, situations for instance you have a cyber attack what what do you do um, you know new technologies that are really uh, making the industry or the, the technology industry 
uh, uh, better in other parts of the world. Uh, that's that's an important aspect, and it's all about practical skill sets. There is no way um, uh, our educational system cannot be practical and expect to get um, that transformation that we desire. So uh, I think it's time that policymakers think of this, right, when it comes to uh, you know uh, the way. Our training systems work right. We have to have institutions that are focused on practical skill sets, practical development. Train people on skills that they use at the job, such that you are able to go to the job your first day and you 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 are able to to write code. You are able to to uh, connect to a database. You are able to access data. You are able to transform data. You are able to make meaning out of data. You are able to help the organization because an organization is hiring you to come in and do a particular thing for the organization. They're not hiring you to come in and, and or, you know, just just sit around and, and, you know, and talk about general ideas. They're hiring you for a targeted reason. And so, uh, education has to be practical in nature it has to be um you know it has to, you have to deal with the real thing and not just the general uh, ideas general ideas are good right like the basic the fundamentals of technology the, the, the you know the core components of of information technology and how that can can work as a whole and, and help africa yes that's important but the particular technologies, knowing how to leverage those particular technologies uh, for our benefits is absolutely important. Gerard mentioned, um, uh, you know, uh, monetization and uh, social, the social media. He mentioned places like YouTube, things like YouTube, uh, Facebook, and monetization. Those are... Th th that's, that's where the money is currently, right? There are people who make millions of dollars just from... Facebook, just from YouTube, and your ability to be able to use your talent and uh, transform it into something meaningful that can help others. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunities out there in terms of free resources that are available on YouTube, that are available on Facebook, but sometimes, you know, we go there just to browse around, just to, to you know, you seek pleasure and all of that, uh, but we fail to understand that there's, there's a lot more as far as uh, those platforms are concerned. And new technologies as well, um, like uh, storage capabilities, those are areas that Africa really needs to work on. Uh, you know, we have a lot of data in Africa, but data is mismanaged. We need to be able to learn how to store that data such that it can be used to make decisions. When it comes to the healthcare sector, for instance, Africa is lacking. Why? Because uh, there's a lot of data, but that data is not transformed. It's not transformed because we lack the tools. We lack the skill sets. We lack people with the practical knowledge to come in, use that data, uh, get meaning out of that data, and be able to make decisions out of it. Those decisions should be used by um, the authorities that are in place, and the authorities also matter. This this comes to to governance um, in Africa. We need to have leaders who understand what they are doing. You don't need to take somebody who is an agriculturalist and put him to lead um, the information technology ministry. If there is an information technology ministry in your country, you don't need to take um, a historian to lead a you know to lead the finance ministry if there's a finance ministry that will not work he will come in apply his he, history and, and all that and the organization or the ministry will not will not produce what is expected of it so the the, the way leadership works in africa needs to be uh, you know to be uh, reconsidered there's a lot of um there's a lot that has to do with leadership and uh, you know that leadership helping uh, the, you know, helping whatever ministry, whatever uh, sector we are talking about, helping it to be able to transform itself. When it comes to agriculture, there's a lot of transformation that can happen. When it comes to technology, I was mentioning blockchain earlier. That is a sector that can really transform uh, supply chain endeavors when it comes to, um, you, you know, blockchain. Blockchain can literally transform the supply chain endeavors in Africa, but 
leaders need to understand how this works they need to understand how the technology works and how it is applied to agriculture they need to understand how it is applied to finance there's a, a whole lot of cryptocurrency um uh, you know ideas you know flourishing in africa now it is time for our leaders to be able to help us direct that energy the right way else you know people uh, will continue to fall into scams there are a lot of scams when it comes to cryptocurrencies right and and that's that's blockchain technology so leadership needs to understand what happens what blockchain is all about and be able to help organizations to be able to help people who are going into those areas to direct the energy the right way so policy making uh, governance uh, affect the way technology is used in transformation there are a lot of young people in africa who go online to do scamming or to you know to to use technology the wrong way so the the moral aspect of technology has to come into play this comes into play if only we have leadership that is able to 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 use techno that is able to direct the energy that is in technology the right way so young people can you know use their skill sets use the talents that they have there are a lot of talented people in africa as i was mentioning but they need to be able to use that those talents the right way to be able to use those talents and direct them to energy or to sectors that will transform africa i think these are really really important areas um that you know our leadership and uh, those who are you know in positions of authorities need to take into consideration as far as um uh, development in africa is concerned there is need uh, for selective exposure and selective perception like I mentioned uh, earlier on uh, listening keenly uh, to the analysis sir, of Premier Saviku we see it is coming still to uh, the uh, political stakeholders it, it shows uh, profound durance, uh, that the decisions taken at the helm can mar or can prosper the continent Africa and uh, these decisions uh, uh, of course can and also fast track uh, uh, the uh, digitalization of the continent Africa can we boast of a digital economy what is lacking what needs to be done and of course how can we uh, make good use of uh, these uh, uh, available opportunities uh, making sure that the digital ecosystem is safe and not uh, enough for us especially young people and we continue with the analysis uh, in the same perspective for our profound difference i want to look at how policy makers can actually uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, change the narratives or change the the, the laws the existing laws uh, that will favor the economic transformation because i i said some some few days ago uh, that we cannot dissociate uh, economic policies from political policies because uh, the political stakeholders are the ones enacting the laws even economic laws of that uh, entrepreneurs or, or private uh, uh, private the private sector actually uh, needs to, to uh, follow to be able to engage uh, fully well in their uh, economic activities making the internal economic environment favorable for the digitalization of the continent africa so in that aspect what do you have to see uh, regarding the the policies governing the digitalization in uh, of uh, african economies uh, absolutely you see when we talk about this uh, aspect so maybe let me put it at a general sense regulations yeah. of uh, how technology is evolving around uh, the african continent most often than not i'm always fond of borrowing the words of uh, professor plo lumumba who said uh, <laughs> those uh, that have powers have no ideas and those that have ideas have uh, absolutely no power uh, taking, uh, for example, for a few African country, uh, countries that have uh, passed through, you understand that there is always this limitation of regulation. If, for example, you present yourself as uh, Mr. Uh, Vico was talking about a uh, cryptocurrency, they will tell you that there is no regulatory body as far as cryptocurrency is uh, concerned. And in Africa, the biggest trait we have is that once there is that conception of no regulation, 
regulatory body, they tend to attach it to illegality. They don't understand that it is a cause for concern to actually maybe identify experts in that domain to see how they can maybe propose regulatory measures in a way that will be mutual, mutually beneficial to those that are involved and also to the government. Because I believe that if there are effective regulations, of course, there will be that possibility of uh, maybe uh, taxation, which will somehow favor the government. But now, in Africa, there is that tendency of maybe, oh, we don't regulate this. There are many times, for example, in Cameroon, that I've been informed or I've been called up that now as a forex trader, it's not being regulated. You're supposed to, you're, you're trading clandestinely, and maybe you are, so, you're, 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 you're going against the, the the law and so on and so forth so they don't actually go ahead to pick out what is supposed to be done to to maybe strengthen the, the institutions that are supposed to empower young people maybe to benefit from this opportunity I bet you the challenge Africans will always face always circulates around our leadership because when something comes ahead maybe to empower the young people there is always this fear that maybe if young people leverage on this opportunity and becomes empowered financially they might tend to ask questions and then if you look at a greater portion of the African continent there have been this system of leadership of maybe limiting people to a particular point of subjectivity or poverty to ensure that they, 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 they live around that sake of poverty in such a way that they will not actually ask questions. So it is always a call for concern for policymakers to see how they can create that enabling environment that Mr. Primus is talking about. They should create an environment that will encourage, will educate, and will provide maybe a serenity for young people to actually leverage on this opportunity. He made mention of something which is extremely important as far as development, not only in technology is concerned. Data collection, data interpretation, and data analysis is one of the things that actually is holding Africa behind. When we are looking about the data nature of Africa, we will notice that most of the African countries, they actually take their data, but from the prediction of the World Bank, not actually from their basis. They actually say that maybe the World Bank stipulated that this is what is happening. We cannot be leading a continent we cannot be pushing a continent ahead. Meanwhile, we cannot even analyze or we don't even know our own facts and figures. Where are we heading to? What are we doing? So when we want to advance in every sector or in every domain, if we want to fight unemployment, we should be able to state categorically our unemployment rate. If we want to talk or if we want to advance agriculture, we should be able to know those that are involved in agriculture, their yields, and then we should be able to know what the input in the agricultural system where they are lacking and how we can advance them if not so we shall only be adopting policies or maybe singing the Very songs policies, that people have given to us to sing yeah? and then we, we in our personal lives it is not reflective so african leaders should become realistic once it concerns the leadership of Africa, and then the only way I think that we can become realistic uh, is if at all our leaders understand that leadership positions is not an opportunity to think about the stomach, but it is an avenue to serve the people. And before you are taking a position to lead, you should understand what the people need. And you should know that when you are taking over, then the data that is being provided to you, you should know that this is where you took over these people. And this is where you are aspiring to leave them so that by the time you are leaving you should be able to give a blueprint of how people can measure you we should not celebrate when we are given opportunities to lead but rather we should work with the people to understand their challenges and how we intend to solve their uh, their problems right now if you look at the, the the meeting that that held in Zimbabwe most of the leaders were highlighting the fact that the World Bank has projected
created that develop or technological uh, technology is going to foster development and in Africa, Africa not person. that their analysis or maybe their their studying of the African nature mm -hmm. has stipulated that maybe if they bring in telemedicines it will advance the health of African or maybe proper computing and data analysis of agricultural processes will bolster the agricultural industry of Africa or maybe we can do this to advance or maybe we can maybe bring in uh, take other technological constraints that will help us take proper accounts of our resources and how we can ma market it. We are actually working on technology based on the recommendation of the World Bank. Then I ask myself, what is the interest of the World Bank or the West in recommending to Africa, which is one thing that African leaders hardly looks into, but jump into acting, which is more of a danger to the let, continent. Let, let me stay here with you, Profound Javans. You just highlighted something uh, which, have, of course, uh, it's very worrisome as far as Africa is concerned, like we online the continent of uh, great opportunities, resources, natural resources, and, of course, the human capital but then uh, we are conversant of these changes we are conversant of the opportunities and of, of course we are also uh, cognizant of the fact that Africa is where uh, everything is but then uh, can, can we uh, connote this attitude to, to a mindset issue like maybe we need to to change our perception to change the way we analyze things like you just highlighted to to be uh, for africa to be without maybe a practical system at least uh, that can actually analyze the involvement development uh, across the continent and of course provide internal data uh, I, I will come back to uh, when the the coronavirus let let's let's understand that when the coronavirus started there were predictions about the the gravity of 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 eater in africa but then it was the contrary but and it still boils down to maybe africa uh, a wedding for for the world bank and other bodies or international organizations to make predictions about the can uh, the continent so now let's look at the place of mindset in changing all of these narratives that will equally in the long run uh, lead to the transformation of africa because i feel like if the mind thinks accurately then we're going to make concrete decisions we have a big problem as far as the mindset of the african leaders are concerned and even the mindset of the future leaders that we are grooming in africa is concerned first we don't have a mindset of problem solving we have a mindset of problem prevention that is a big problem with africa if to say we have that mindset to solve problem then good and fine let's take for example the case of poverty today you see an average african who is maybe contented with a salary when given a position to lead maybe elected in parliament elected as a mayor or maybe appointed as a minister then they have just one thing in uh, one modus operandi making sure their entire generation never go back to live the average life they were living before being given that position of responsibility Absolutely. which is a canker worm that is eating africa deep if to say we can understand that we are to solve problems then we will know the problems we are having Everybody in Africa states it clearly. We have the problem of uh, maybe unemployment. How can we solve the problem of unemployment? They will give good strategies, good principles, but how do they implement it? It That's becomes a problem. problem. When it comes to the implementation, they design strategies that will help melt public coffers into their, pub into their private accounts which makes me to always have the conception that african leaders think just about one thing a majority of african leaders nevertheless there are good there are some good african leaders but a majority of african leaders think only about the stomach about their children and the future of their great grandchildren they don't think about the future of the people which is a cause for concern for the african continent if we must advance we have to understand something. If to say that we are addressing the problem of unemployment, we should know that uh, fighting unemployment must be accompanied with an industrial uh, industrial growth. We should create industries that will combat employment. We should create an en enabling environment for private sectors to push 
uh, to, to fight unemployment. I bet you if to say that we create 1,000 private uh, companies in Africa, for example, or in a country like Cameroon, for example, with one having the cap cap capacity to employ 10 people, then 1,000 companies will be employing 10,000 people, which somehow cuts down the rate of unemployment and that is how practical the African continent is supposed to be we should not only be thinking about ourselves thinking about having three square meals per day making sure that those that we are leading are lament languaging in poverty for us to go back during the time of campaign or maybe during uh, when we, we need a favor from them give them a plate of food and they celebrate us as heroes we should know that the true heroes of Africa are actually those that will bring about the transformation of the continent of Africa and that transformation of Africa will come from all domain even if you are in the private sector you are in the public sector in every domain you find yourself as an african you have to contribute to that transformation that is leading africa to wherever we are going to so we should work on our mindset we should build our mindset <coughs> And we should not think of our future successes. We should look at our legacy to be the success that we shall be appraised for. Let us not spend time writing ourselves on particular documents that shall be read by us, but we should write ourselves, we should imprint our names on documents that our future generations will come up and say that this person came up with this transformation and because of this transformation this is what we are benefiting as a people so the mentality an african leader should possess should be the mentality of service to the people and not that of self-service which is currently dominating the african continent our mentality is something we should actually work on we should render services that will create that environment that we ourselves will be proud of it beats my imagi imagination at times when you do analysis and you see that a majority of african leaders do send their families their children to to go maybe work abroad or study abroad and then come back to Africa with business strategies that are aimed at milking the African continent dry rather than transforming the African industrial zone, which Excellent. is a big problem. So I think that African should work on African leaders should work on their mindset and their mentality. It's all about having the right mindset uh, uh, that we will see Africa write its uh, economic trajectory. We capitalize on the economic trajectory because, uh, of course, this is what Africa needs to be able to solve the problems that the continent is facing at this particular moment. Uh, we continue the analysis with you, Mr. Vicker. Uh, we are continuing to look at the place of uh, digital technologies in face lifting the continent or the economic uh, uh, the economic development of the continent Africa and then uh, in your in your own perspective what at what level do you think Africa stands at this particular moment uh, uh, we talk about digital technology we cannot forget the the fourth industrial revolution and uh, uh, one of Africa's leaders president Paul Kagame of uh, Rwanda has always been very practical in uh, urging especially young people because uh, this is, uh, they are the assets that will obviously transform the African uh, continent if actually they adopt the right mindset. So how can we use this uh, uh, existing technological trends? Which one of course do you think can work practically in Africa because we know sometimes we look at technology and also we particularize it which one works best for Africa and how can we uh, go uh, as, as far as implementing fees to be able to attend uh, this objective of seeing a digital friendly uh, environment across all sectors in Africa Thanks, Clarice. Uh, let me let me come back to um, let me come back to some of the points uh, that uh, Javans mentioned earlier. Uh, he mentioned the the idea of mindset and and the, the, the mindset of solving problems instead of you know just just um, uh, attacking uh, problems when they have come. Uh, you know we need to attack the problems before they come. We need to solve solve issues, prevent issues. We have to be preventive instead of uh, reactive, right? So. Um, 
I think those those are really important important points. Uh, let's look at this. Let's compare um, some of the the countries in Africa that are uh, developing that are that, that you see a fast paced development in the way they, they operate, and those that are really far be, behind. Let us look at you know what do you what do we see that is different in this country? What makes that difference? You discover that mindset is the main issue you mentioned uh, paul karame of rwanda look at his leadership style he looks at what is practical you just mentioned his pra practical nature and the way he he leverages young people to to, to build uh, rwanda uh, i had a, an experience with a rwandan uh, entrepreneur uh, I was trying to bring in the idea of cloud computing. I was talking about, you know, hey, we are working with AWS, uh, Azure, and Google, and yeah, we we have engineers who would come in and help, uh, you know, your company build blah 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 infrastructure and help you uh, get to wherever you want to go. And his very first question to me was, uh, will this technology be built in Rwanda? And I was like, wow, that is the mindset, mindset we are talking about. It is not only about consumption. You don't only consume technology. You want, to, you want to produce technology. You want to reach at that point where we're able to produce technology. That tells us something. Put leadership in place that is able to visualize, that has a vision. That will look at problems and, and say, hey, all right, we have a problem of, uh, you know, we are producing uh mangoes we are producing oranges why do we all always sell our produce or sell our mangoes and oranges to america why do we always you know supply things outside africa okay let's solve this problem can we build something that transforms our oranges into orange juice can we build something that transforms our mangoes into mangoes mango juice and so launch you know effective programs with leadership that is that understands how transformation is done uh, entrepreneurs put entrepreneurs into work people who understand the value of solving problems that is very critical that's the very first thing rwanda is advancing at a high pace because Paul Kagame has figured out that it's all about the mindset. It's all about the leadership. It's all about people who are able to solve problems. Don't bring me somebody who would come and theorize and theorize about, um, you know, agricultural theories that have worked in America. Oh yes, let's let's adopt them. Let's adopt them without thinking about the current situation where we are. We need to be practical in nature, right? So it's, it's all about that mindset, that, you know, being able to, to think about our problems and solve them. Okay, I have a, a bank. How do I help my clients be able to access uh, my banking, you know, my banking resources from wherever they are? I was very disappointed uh, with one of... Um, the, the, the banking companies uh, in Cameroon because I have a bank account with them. Right up to now, I'm not able to access my bank account online. Why? That's a big company that's been in banking for a long time in Africa. Why am I not able to access my account? And they want me, you know what they told me? Hey, you need to sign documents and mail them to us. Um, why would I need to do that? Right? So you need to be able to figure out problems before they occur and solve them. Why should... In the 21st century, somebody not be able to access a bank account no matter where they find themselves. Why should that be the case? Now, this brings to mind um, the fact that, uh, you know, there needs to be accountability in terms of how these things are done. When you put a leader and things are not going well, well, he needs to be accountable. People need to be held accountable for whatever they're doing. If you are not effective, tell us why you are not effective. If this is not working, tell us why it's not uh, working. And this would only work if we have the data that backs it up. If you cannot 
use your data he mentioned uh, you know we always talk about the world health organization and and the data that they've brought the different organizations different bodies uh, you know uh, that that gather data out of africa even these bodies are out of they don't even operate in like in africa but you know they gather data and we in africa we consume it and all our analysis are based on that data that is gathered by others yes it's true they may have agents and people working in africa but they do not live the reality it is africa belongs to us and we need to be responsible uh, you know to it we need to be responsible um you know responsible managers you don't hire a manager who would come in and just sign papers and that's that mentality uh javans was uh, was mentioning right uh, people who want to solve problem and not just sit in offices and sign papers that is that is that's absolutely important look at the ministries in I want to cite a, a particular example. I'm from Cameroon. I want to cite the example of Cameroon. Look at the ministries in Cameroon. I'm talking about ministries that are responsible for the lives, the livelihoods of people in Cameroon. Look at the number of ministries that have functioning websites. I can tell you right now, there are not many ministries in Cameroon that have functional websites. What does that tell you? It tells you that either the ministry is hiding information from people or they do not care. Those are two things it tells me. Either they are hiding information or they do not care or they do not want to work on it. What is the work of a website? A website is informational. It helps people get in contact. If I want to uh, produce a document, hey, I go online, it tells me, hey, this is what you need to fill. Fill it out. Why do I need to go to Yaoundé to an office physically to fill a document that I can fill while at home? It's, it's absolute. At this age and time, we should not be talking about a even a startup that doesn't have a website. Not to talk of ministries that are supposed to be leading people. You know, you're talking about the Ministry of, of Finance. You're talking about the Ministry of, uh, you know, the, whatever. It should be able to have the basic infrastructure, the basic, the basic ICT components that are able to give people the chance to develop. And so, you want to register a business in Africa? What is the process of registering a business? It would take me one day, uh, or not a few hours, here in the U.S. to register a business and and and, and get going. It would take you. I don't know how many days in a country in Africa, Nigeria, Cameroon, or others, right? You go through a process, a lengthy process that is meaningless, a lengthy process that has no value. They will tell you, hey, you need to go to this office and do this. You need to go here and do this. And by the time you discover it, uh, it's just a process that helps them melt you down in terms of corruption. So we need to think about, you know, problem solving. All right, I'm here to solve a problem. What are the problems that this organization has? First of all, where am I standing? Where is the organization standing? If we don't have data, is like like the, the 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 real money now. Data is the gold now. If we don't have data about things that are happening in Africa, if we don't have data about, for instance, COVID, when COVID broke out, what was happening in the U.S. was we had minute by minute updates about you know about um the, the the prevalence rate about the number of people who are sick the number who have uh, who have actively uh, contacted the virus uh, uh, such that people could take preventive measures so uh, there was an app that would tell you hey would show you the location of where somebody recently contact contacted the virus and as such people could take preventive measures so how would you be able to to, to do that if you don't have the data so data is very important and the way that data is transformed is absolutely important you you're asking about the types of technologies that can really help africa uh, get to that position where it will talk about digital 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 transformation first of all we need to put the the the, the environment the a favorable environment before talking about digital transformation in Africa. If you don't have internet access, there's no way you will connect to internet resources. IT and uh, the whole technology 
thing today is all about internet access and computing resources if you don't have internet connectivity if you don't have electricity or power you cannot power on the computer that will help you connect to the global interface if you don't have the internet connectivity there is no way you even if you have a, a functioning computer there's no way you will access information there's no way you access the tools that you need and these tools are what make up the technology so i think it's time uh, we begin to hold people accountable why is the ministry of energy not able to uh, enhance the production of of the energy that is needed for electricity why is it that we have you know we have dams flowing over everywhere in africa and people are not able to have the energy that is needed why is it so and, and so it it baffles me like you know we have the resources we have the raw materials but let's leverage on those raw materials to provide people the the, the basic things that they need to be able to even talk about transformation so the first things first we need to think of the energy sector we need to think of the the bandwidth internet bandwidth in africa these are fundamental things that we need to consider before talking about the transformative aspects of technology because you cannot even connect to the technology if these things are not put in place so the first thing is <laughs> the, the, the infrastructure in place the the bandwidth the energy and then we need to talk about the tools what are what are the, some of the tools that we can leverage i was talking to a young person in cameroon and he was telling me hey there are regulations that do not allow us you know to the, like people they want us to store our data just in data centers that are in in operating within the world has moved over that right like the most secure the most secure organizations in the world for instance the u.s department of 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 uh, uh you know immigration and so on and so forth the, the u.s department of of uh labor and, and all of these departments right all of the, the, the major departments the most secure departments in the world are operating in the cloud and why would we think that uh, we need to have our data center located only in, Af in 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 a particular place for us to be able to to think that we are secure. So the mentality, first of all, people need to be educated. They don't understand what you know. So they don't understand what is in place. So you, you need leadership that first of all understands what technology is all about, understand the new technologies, and understand how it can be leveraged for the benefits of people. Yes, there are. There are limitations. There are limitations in terms of, you know, the way the deployment processes happen and all that. But you need to be able to have skilled people. That's why we talk about practical education who understand how to overcome those challenges to leverage the benefits that new technologies uh, like cloud computing would provide. So cloud computing is one of those technologies that would offer Africa the, the storage capabilities that they need because Africa needs the storage capabilities data continues to grow there's the idea of big data and it's just the idea of the volume of data that is flowing today imagine the number of tweets that people make a day the number of uh, facebook messages that people send the number of of videos that are uploaded on youtube where is that data stored do we even have the the the, the capabilities to store that data and so that's where cloud computing can come in with, with, with you know storage capabilities that can help us store our data once that data has been stored how do we transform that data that is where machine learning and uh, machine learning algorithms you know ai that's artificial intelligence come in and this goes back to the practical skill sets that we mentioned you need people who understand how to build basic machine learning programs basic basic machine learning algorithm algorithms these algorithms will be able to help in decision making they will be able to help in, you know, leveraging the data that we've stored and uh, better decisions can be made. So you need leadership that are able to understand data, first of all. You need to understand what that data is all about. We don't need a historian uh, to lead uh, a technology company because he doesn't understand what data is all about. He doesn't understand how data comes down to, yeah, to make better decisions. And so you need a technologist to lead the technology uh, organization. You may need a historian to lead the, the history department in a university. You may need a, a historian to lead whatever. 
departments that deals with culture and, and all of that. But you don't need a historian to, to lead the finance ministry. You don't need a historian to lead the technology uh, industry and so you see the, the the effect of big data big data is that aspect that deals with large data set volumes of data that come from facebook from uh, iot devices from different things and you can curate that data to be able to make informed decisions such that when those decisions are made they can be transformative we can use those decisions to better harness uh you know the resources that we have in africa those are some of the technologies ai is is everywhere there's chat gpt which gives people the opportunities to do anything they want to do you can tell chat gpt now to hey um i want to learn about uh technological development in africa give me resources and it will just give you everything that you need you, you ask gpt uh, chat gpt hey can you can you program me uh, or write me a program that sends emails every morning i don't want to do that manually chat gpt will just write it out for you and you're able to le leverage it hey chat gpt write a poem for me and it will give you the poem you need hey chat gpt can you tell me about this particular person and it will give you all the details about the person so you know see how AI is transforming things and we need to be able to leverage um, that AI. It's not only about consumption. We need entrepreneurs who are able to understand that, understand the algorithms that build uh, AI first of all and be able to leverage it for the benefit of Africa. How can we bring AI into the banking sector in Cameroon? How can we bring um, big data development in, you know, in in particular sectors in Africa, in in our various organizations in Africa, uh, so those are those are some of the technologies that we can look at. There's blockchain, which I mentioned earlier. It is an amazing uh, technology that literally gets away with a, a centralized system. Right? It's a technology that opens people up, such that there's no middleman that comes in to kind of put an eye on everything that is happening but there are different ways that blockchain technology can help africa in terms of supply chain helping you get tax that you know can uh, help people uh, transport goods to wherever they have to go right uh, if you want to transport something you need skew numbers on on those things uh, on on the products that you want to transform and so blockchain can come in uh, help in that process help you to be able to code out those aspects um, that you know will facilitate the movement of goods from Africa and why not make Africa a global a, a global space a global marketplace where uh, goods move freely from one country to, to another why do I need to 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 not be able to to pay to not be able to move freely to Nigeria to sell whatever I'm producing in Cameroon if I produce more in Cameroon. If Cameroon produces more chicken, why is Cameroon limited in supplying chicken in in Ghana? Why is it a problem? So African leadership, when they come to these global meetings, like the meeting in Zimbabwe, need to discuss about how they can work together in, you know, in solving some of these problems that are just basic problems that deal with infrastructure network like good roads uh, from farms to market uh, helping people get the, the the markets that they need as i think these are some of the things and it all boils down to that mindset it all boils down to you know that mentality that people have uh, when it comes to transformation Everything and uh, I would just uh, actually uh, uh, conclude it to say uh, that from what you just said, uh, that if we give value actually to the existing technologies uh, or the new technological trends in the 21st century, we will see how we will actually transform Africa because of the advantages of these technologies are enormous, especially as new media is already a reality in uh, Africa. We continue to analyze continue to look at the place or the role of uh, uh, new technologies in the total transformation 
of the continent africa before we continue let's uh, get again a short break but then this break we'll be listening to one of africa's leaders president paul kagame who highlighted the place of technology in transforming africa let's listen to his speech which he delivered in uh, zimbabwe during the 2023 20, uh, edition of uh, transform africa summit let's listen Already many of the new high quality jobs being created in Africa are powered by technology and connectivity. And that applies even to traditional sectors such as agriculture, mining and retail this trend is only going to speed up let me highlight some of the strategic levers that we can use to be ready part one everyone has to be connected to affordable broadband and have a smart device. Mobile broadband, broadband has been spreading rapidly, but more than 60% of Africans who have access do not use it. We need to keep reducing costs. Part two. A big piece of the puzzle is the digital skills and literacy. One reason many Africans are not taking full advantage of the internet is that they are not yet comfortable with the interface or it is in a language they don't understand. Part three is digital identity and cyber security. And part four is continental integration, such as the African Continental Free Trade Area or the One Africa Network. We need to make the digital identities of individuals and businesses portable across borders while using technology to reduce barriers to trade. All of these items are within our power to achieve. Our continental institutions led by the African Union Commission are already at work. We just need to move faster with a sense of urgency. Let me conclude with a word about artificial intelligence applications. This powerful technology has made headlines in recent weeks to a big part for the right reasons. It is still unclear how it will affect existing jobs and what safety concerns there will be. But it is already possible to see that Africa actually has the most to gain because of how these applications can narrow productivity gaps between African farms and our competitors on the other continents. We should therefore move quickly 
to embrace artificial intelligence and make it work for us. Once again, I thank our host. of Rwanda and of course uh, an excerpt of a speech he delivered uh, to stakeholders who gathered in uh, uh, Zimbabwe uh, to discuss how Africa can be transformed, how we can use digital technology to transform Africa and of course uh, Pufong Javans you may want to react uh, to what President Paul Kagame just highlighted uh, in his speech. Yeah, I think he mentioned one thing that has always been a big problem or oh, 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 it has always crowd, been in my mind yeah. thinking about uh, how technology will, uh, advance, or will oh, affect absolutely. us in Africa and he did made a statement of how uh, artificial intelligence, intelligence will yes. affect the jobs in Africa. You know my greatest problem as far as uh, AI, uh, robots and so on is concerned with, in respect to the African continent is that robots in as much as they, con they, they come to advance or to push societies ahead they have a unique uh, way of doing things. Uh, some robots comes to replace uh, replace jobs or to take jobs that are done by human. Yeah. There was a time in uh, in Kigali when I noticed that uh, at the airport there at Kigali that the announcement was being made by a robot. Normally that's so, uh, that's a human job that a robot took it's over. So now yeah. I used to ask myself. How will uh, we, or actually bring in, uh, uh, bring in uh, AI, so or technology, these particular aspects of technology yeah. in the African continent that will not negatively affect the African continent, knowing fully well that in the African continent we have a huge rate of un unemployment. unemployment. It's Absolutely, true that when yeah. you go on Google to Google search, Google will tell you it's about thirty percent, thirty-six percent. But when it comes down on the ground, you see that it's huge. We have heard African head of state and the quality of employment too matters. The quality of employment matters, which mm -hmm. is why I always say that we, when we talk about employment in Africa, we should also talk about underemployment yeah. because most of the African leaders or ministries of labor will come ahead to tell us that I've created about twenty thousand jobs in a particular year. But now, how many people are graduates that have self-employed themselves through Okada business or call box business, Absolutely, which of course yes. is underemployment. That's just a way of that's the, the informal sector. Uh, the, actually. the informal sector. But now, when we talk about the employment according to ratings, mm -hmm. when the officials come out to give their results, they just generalize everything because they will talk of thousands of people that have been employed. But when you ask them where did you employ who, they will not give you, which also goes back to that point of data that we are trying to hamper on seriously yeah. so now when artificial intelligence is coming into africa robots <coughs> enter africa there is a high tendency that they are coming actually to take some jobs or some few jobs that some Africans are leveraging on to better their lives. So now how is Africa trying to solve the problem or to ensure that as they are coming in, they will not pose a threat or maybe they will not increase the rate of unemployment. And the only way they can uh, they can do that is to restructure and empower the private sector to ensure that we become more of a productive economy than a consumption uh, a, 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 con a, a consumption economy which actually we are now Af artificial intelligence uh, robots and whatsoever is doing so well in the in, in the western world because the 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 the, 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 uh, the rate of uh, unemployment is quite low there are countries having as little as four percent three percent two point six percent and uh, we even migrate to their countries to do some of their jobs for them but in africa we even lack the jobs we see thousands of graduates across uh, the streets of africa without jobs we see people that are over educated doing menial jobs just for survival yeah. when it comes to it now how do we 
ensure that technological advancement in Africa will not pose as a threat to the African continent or to us that occupy the African continent. The only way will be for an en enabling environment for our small scale businesses Indeed, to yeah. prosper, to ensure that we should pick out those aspects of technology that comes to promote our local industries i bet you africa can do very well in agriculture and one of the things that africa should be looking at we know that the statistics makes us to understand that about 66 percent of the african continent is engaged in agriculture mm -hmm. how do we incorporate technology into the agricultural sector to en ensure that about 66 percent of our population is benefiting from technology how do we bring it into those key sectors that are actually acting as a breadbasket for us in the continent now. That is what we should be looking at. We should not go and then we are bringing the aspects of technology in Africa that will come and maybe even hinder our skilled workers to even perform their tasks or maybe to even cause some of our parents or cause some of us lose our jobs which will even pose as a bigger threat a to the African threat, yeah. continent and if to say that we just focus on what technology will do without thinking of the negative effect Absolutely, that technology yeah. will have on Africa we will be digging our grave in Cameroon, in Nigeria, West Africa East Africa, we complain every day of cyber crime, we see cyber our brothers coming us Absolutely, in the same yeah. continent, those are the dangers of technology, but we are appraising technology, we have not seen how we can use those particular communicative aspects to better the life of our people, I bet you you hear young people saying they are running Google Ads, they are running SEOs. Absolutely. Those are things that they can do for companies that are domiciled in Africa to boost their audience, to boost their market, but they are doing it to convince a white man or to convince somebody in the West or to convince a fellow brother that I'm selling poppy or I'm doing this or I'm doing that. Which are the negative aspects? So as a continent, we should be looking at the positive aspects aspects or we should be looking at what technology will do to advance us and the only way for us to advance is for us to know our stage and know where we are going to we should not be revolving around the same cycle hoping that some some kind of imaginary thing or maybe another jesus christ of nazareth will come to push us ahead if that is the way we are seeing it is wrong which is why i so i strongly think that Paul Kagame is very right we're trying to see that the coming of AI tools or maybe a robot is not coming to create a maybe unemployment a leader or maybe a visionary leader like him has already understood that this is a threat that these things are going to pose so now in adopting this these are the strategies i am putting in place in ensuring that it shouldn't come up i bet you most of the young most of the the, the medium uh, the, the small enterprises or startup enterprises yeah. are sparking off in uganda in in rwanda sorry and even those that are starting there are many cameroonians that have gone to to, to rwanda to ex to 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 start up there and they are doing better mm -hmm. so countries should see how they can maybe empower these startups to ensure that in as much as we are adopting technology technology should come to complement our human resources it so if our human resources it shouldn't come to stop our human resources and pose a bigger problem to us as a people of course and that's where the problematic lies uh, uh performing children so we're going to look at how uh various government stakeholders can mitigate the negative effects of these uh, new technologies i think you want to shed more light on that uh, mr vico okay yes be, be, before i go into that right uh that I, I was even surprised that Kagame mentions AI and uh, you know he knows that it's existing he knows the implications of AI I bet you there are African leaders who do not who have never heard about uh, whatever is happening in the AI world now <laughs> so so it's 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 kind of it it just it it just gives me some you know a feeling that there are people out there there are leaders out there who are beginning to to really do what is expected uh, and he is a prime example of of what an african leader should be or well let's say uh, the visionary that the visionaries that we should have as, as leaders people who who think ahead right people who look at problems and figure out hey how do we tackle these these issues that are coming up 
and of course uh, it's it's true that um, there are those negative aspects like job cuts uh, that AI would, would, would come to 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 uh, you know uh, unfortunately bring to most people in Africa. I, I say most people uh, in Africa. Why do I say so? Because of our educational system. Our edu educational system has embo emboldened the, the white collar mentality such that. You know, people think that being a, 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 a big person in society or being valuable in society is, or to your family is to sit in an office, have AC in a coat and, and, and sit off flamboyant and looking neat and, and all that. Those are the jobs that AI is coming to take away. So I think it's time we rethink, uh, you know, our educational system. Give people the opportunities to think out of themselves as a philosopher um people need to think out of you know the normal things you should not just uh, graduate from school and think that you want to be hired to be a teacher you want to go into ens you want to go into enam you want to go into this because you will come out and be a an administrator you come out and and be talking to people and signing papers that's that mentality that we need to kill right so so i think ai is coming to cut those types of jobs but it's coming as an opportunity for entrepreneurs so why do i say so because it's coming to make us see that there are those practical things that matter transformative things that matter it's coming to help us understand that hey you need to focus on something that you're good at you should be able to develop your agricultural sector such that people who graduate from the university who studied agriculture should be able to develop the, the you know farms should be able to go into agriculture even employ themselves why would you not open a poultry if you came out of the agriculture school you understand how all of the transformative things work why would you not open an, a poultry i am in the u.s and i have a poultry in cameroon i'm in the u.s and i have hectares of of farmlands um you know in in different places in Cameroon. Why? Because I understand, you know, that those are the things that will transform Africa. Agriculture will, tra those are resources. Agriculture will transform Africa. We need to, 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 to leverage um, on technology to better, you know, the, the way we, we do agriculture, the, the way we transform our, you know, our resources. So you can buy a, a you know, a machine, a technologically advanced machine from china or wherever uh, bring it to africa and set it up set an industry that transform mangoes to juice that's an employment um that you know that's that's employment you're creating for many people all those people who will be operators uh in in in, in that factory those are people you're employing and that is how you're transforming whatever is being produced it's not enough to produce it and then sell it to america and and i was i was thinking about this right the rubber that is produced in cameroon the bananas that are produced in cameroon the best of those are sent abroad and uh, we unfortunately uh, <laughs> enjoy the the less I don't, I don't understand how that works right yeah. that's that's unfortunate i think it is time our leaders and those who are directly involved with these processes begin to think how to change them. And of course, uh, there are challenges that technology brings. Um, uh, Javans mentioned uh, cyber crime, cyber criminality, and all of that. Governance is an important aspect when it comes to technology. So, uh, regulations when it comes to data transfer, when it comes to the way data is transferred from one place to another, has to be taken seriously take for instance in the u.s we have what is called the hipaa laws hipaa laws are laws that guide the way any any company that deals with healthcare that guides the way that company uh stores data so any data that is gathered about a patient has to be stored for seven years and if you don't store that data for seven years you are breaking the HIPAA laws, and so you'll be held accountable. And you can pay up to uh, about 50,000 US dollars just for breaking that rule. And so you see accountability coming into play. The HIPAA law says if you don't encrypt the data that you, 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 you're storing, you're breaking the law.
and so every data that you store has to, you store has to be encrypted and so through those regulations companies that deal in healthcare are very aware of the consequences of breaking those rules and that goes to enforce the way technology is used and so if i'm a healthcare care company and i'm storing data whatever i'm storing it that data has to be encrypted so that it cannot be stolen by cyber uh, uh, criminals that data has to be there for seven years why because it has to be preserved in case there's something about that client and you know they need to 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 you know uh, uh, study it right they need to get more information about it and study it people have to give consent before their information is stored and so if you are a healthcare company and you're just going about getting information from people without without their consent you are held liable those are regulations that you know uh you know institutions governance institutions have to take into consideration in order to help people uh, better leverage technology and so our leadership needs to understand policies, how policies are made, how uh, regulations are made that govern different aspects of technology. And so if you are, you are in, in the cloud computing sector, you know that there are regulations that guide that sector. If you are in the healthcare sector, you know that there are regulations that guide that, um, that sector. If you run a technology company, you know that you are bound or yeah, you're bound by regulations that um, deal with data transformation, data movement. You don't just move data from place to place. There are, there are laws that you have to follow. If you are an organization that is global, for instance, and you're working, you know, and, and you have, uh, let's say, branches all over the world, the way you move data from the U.S. to Europe, matters there are regulations that guide that you don't just get up and move data from place to place those are regulations that african leaders need to begin to take into considerations into consideration yes there are there are a few regulations here and there but those are not enforced so it's not only about the regulations it's also about enforcing those regulations what are the mechanisms that we hold people accountable if you are a technology technology company and there are regulations about data transfer about data encryption about data uh, encryption in transit about data encryption at rest about how you deal with patient information about how you deal with all of those if you don't follow those instructions if you don't follow those guidelines what are the penalties how are those penalties enforced? And so in the U.S., for instance, I'm giving a, the U.S. example because that, that's where most of my experience is. In the U.S., for instance, you know, you discover that uh, there, is, there is regulation at state level and there's regulation at um, the federal level, which means there's regulation at every level. You can't, you can't if you're operating a business in Kentucky, where I, I, I am, for instance, the, the rules... And regulations in Kentucky guide me and so if I go against the rules and regulations in Kentucky I'm held responsible and I'm also held responsible because some of those rules are federal and so you discover that you're paying for <laughs> breaking rules at the state level paying for breaking rules at the uh, federal level and that's not all you need to be able to identify whoever is breaking the rules and so once once you know, organizations and countries in Africa are able to segment things, right? Take, for instance, if a technology organization is existing in this region, that regional um, governance or leadership team of that region should be able to put regulations in place for that region, for any company that exists in that region. Uh, and there should be regulations at the national level, right, that guide people on how to use data. You don't just... Um, get data without consent you need to get data you need to consent somebody needs to tell you hey you can use this data to do this and that's why you see people just just sharing phone numbers you don't share my phone number with, without my consent you see people just sharing information just somebody will just reach out to he, he doesn't even like everything is just disorganized so first of all people need to be able to identify others i was i was laughing at a situation that occurred in cameroon um, a company was, I think it's, it's a, one of the companies that operates like Uber or something. I, I don't know the name. And I think the government was kind of shutting them down because the government thought, you know, 
uh, they, 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 they are not able to identify that they are drivers, they are not able to enforce some regulations and all that, uh, a lot of things. And I was like, all right, the government has most of the blame because how do you identify drivers? That if there's no way that drivers are identified, then how do you first of all even begin to enforce regulations as far as that is concerned? So first of all, the systems need to be put in place. This comes back to identification. Everyone needs to be identified. If you are a driver and you have a taxi, you need to be identified. And I can go on the website or on, on the ministry's website and say, hey, I want to identify this driver. This driver, if there's the, that consent, you fill your consent form and you're able to get the information you want. Such that if there, if there is a situation that happens, that driver needs to be held accountable. They need to be even able to figure out that driver. I bet you there are drivers who are driving in cities in Africa who they just bought their car from wherever or they stole it and they are working freely, right? People are not even able to identify. So there are broken systems that first of all need to be maintained before we can even, you know, really talk about governance. Because you need to identify somebody, a company that's operating, you need to be able to tell, hey, this is a small business that is operating in this sector. This is the sector where this business is, uh, is operating. And these are the rules that guide this sector. And so these, this, these are the penalties that you face if you go against these rules. And this is how that, that, that penalty or those regulations are enforced. There needs to be kind of enforcement strategies, right, that are put in place such that people don't just go, go away with, with whatever crimes they commit in particular sectors. So I think uh, uh, our leadership needs to to, to take a lot into consideration. First of all, uh, broken systems need, need to be put in place, <laughs> need to be men, uh, men I don't know, uh, and, and, you know, different things need to be considered. There are a lot of variables that are in place that really affect the way uh, our transformative journey uh, is going in Africa. And first of all, some of those systems need to be put in place, regulations need to be put in place by people who understand the technologies. You don't come and take somebody who is a medical personnel to put regulations about finance. There, there's no way that would work. He would just come up with his medical knowledge and there's no way he would be transformative in the finance sector. And so you need people who are technologists in the finance sector to be able to do that. And and so it comes, it boils back to the skill sets, right? People who are in particular sectors need to work in those sectors. They need to be specialists in particular sectors who develop policies, people who understand what policies are. If I'm in the medical field, I need to understand uh, policies. What are, what are, you know, the, the, how do we overcome a pandemic when it comes to a pandemic? At a pandemic time, how do we overcome this? What are the things that are in place? Take for instance, uh, there, there, are, there are risk management strategies for every company, right? And so uh, you need to have a document in place where if this type of risk occurs, this is what happens. If there is a, a flaw that occurs, this is what happens. These are the exit doors. And those need to be, to be, to be uh, put in practice. Like uh, here in the U.S., for instance, there is a moment that your phone will just ring and they are telling you, hey, this is a test. They are testing uh, the notification system if it's still working, right? That occurs like once in every three months or four months. If you're in a company, there are drills that occur. And, you know, the company may just uh, uh, fire an alarm and people move out of the building. For instance, if there's a fire that occurs, a fire that happens in, in, in the building, how do people move out of the building? And so you move out the same way that you move out in the when when there is an occurrence, an event of uh, a fire breakout. And so th there needs to be policies in place and real practical documents that show you exactly how that is implemented. And so the organization knows that, and the people working there know, hey, if there is a fire breakout, this is how I go out. In, and if there's there's an, a pandemic, this is how we solve it. If there is this, this is how we tackle it. So I think it's it's all about bringing the right people who understand how technology works, how it can be implemented to make those decisions so that they can enhance um, the development of our continent, our beautiful continent, Africa.
data development of the beautiful continent Africa a great insight uh, the, uh, regarding uh, the technologies and how we can uh, use it to harness uh, development across Africa especially uh, and also make uh, uh, the, the human capital ready uh, for uh, these uh, innovations that will come up about as a result of these new technologies uh, we still have some few minutes to be together let's let's look at this uh, 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 profound difference when we talk I, I, I always want to to to, to bring in uh, the cooperation between African countries and the rest of the world we know that we cannot actually uh, uh, maybe isolate international trade and today we are talking about technology I'm sure you made mention of the fact that uh, maybe they can buy a, a sophisticated machine from China that can help revolutionize agriculture across Africa but then now let's look at the, the the interconnectivity or the cooperation between the already advanced technological nations and the African continent how can in terms of their cooperation these countries or can, uh, nations that are already technologically advanced or are already digitalized how can they uh, use the, the, their, 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 their connectivity or their cooperation with African uh, countries to fast track uh, this uh, uh, technological drive in Africa that is the first question and a second question I would like us to to look at of course Paul Kagame and other stakeholders mentioned uh, you know the coming of technology has a lot as far as potentials unlocking potentials is concerned in Africa and we know that the African continent of free trade area is a historic uh, landmark project that of course uh, many have already started trading under the free trade area and, and it has a problem of what do we trade and we know that technology comes with innovations so with all of these we already see uh, the colossal effect of these technological uh, trends, but then how can we maximize it to our own advantage? Okay, uh, starting with your first question. I think uh, Africa can never separate herself as far as uh, international trade uh, is concerned. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is one thing I strongly believe in, uh, technological transfer. And uh, when I talk about technological transfer, I'm looking at that scenario whereby, uh, where we are lacking, then we can transfer the technology maybe from one continent to another. Mm -hmm. Maybe, for example, if we are entering into a partnership with China, the partnership should be maybe for let me just take a close uh, example of what happened in Cameroon yeah, some years back whereby we had a very uh, the head of state had a very good vision to ensure that each and every Cameroonian university student has uh, access to the internet by providing them a laptop yeah. now this is how the technology could have easily been transferred from China we look for a possibility to sign a mutually beneficial uh, agreement, agreement with a Chinese yeah. company to come into Cameroon, raise a factory that produces uh, 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 computers branded made in Cameroon to be distributed to Cameroonian students and in other way create a market for maybe Cameroonian laptops to be sold in other African countries or even sold back into the West. Yeah. Not going to borrow money from China, buy from China, produce in China, China. and brought back to uh, to Cameroon, which for me it's really it it, it was a leadership uh, error yeah. as yeah. I can I can call it. So now Africa should move towards technological transfer if to say that we we are endowed with minerals how do we do since up to now we are not yet advanced as far as mining is concerned we should select those that are interested in making a career out of mining send them to countries that are advanced in mining study mining with the we, on, we, on on the basis of returning back to cameroon and maybe uh, empowering or transforming the mining industry in cameroon there is one thing i love so much about the united states when it concerns leadership yeah. when the the, the they have this i think uh, maybe a program they, they, they select people from africa train them uh, uh, on maybe their leadership system or business system then return them back to africa on the condition that you must live back in your country 
for at least two years or so before you can seek for maybe permanent residence so that that yeah. two years period will give you the opportunity to transform the knowledge you have acquired from them into your continent so we should see how maybe we transport this technology from these countries and plan it enough in 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 africa in a way that it will be beneficial to us as a continent Thank we should not care. only look at the possibility of maybe sending our resources to them to transform them and maybe put us in debt then come back to sell or uh, sell to us because we have been we are we are we are we are what i term designated consumers we are not designated consumers we are supposed supposed to actually play key roles as far as the evolution of the world is concerned so and yes. if to say that we are acknowledging the fact that there are countries that are advanced than us as far as technology is concerned we should invest in transporting the technology from there back to this country in a country like Cameroon, for example, we have stadiums that have been constructed by China, Turkey, and so on and so forth. They have contracts to maintain these stadiums for a period of time. But I bet you they will maintain it maybe for 10 years, maybe 15 years to go back to their countries. Up to now, you don't have Cameroonians that are being trained on how to maintain this stadia. Where is the sustainability? It is not going to go anywhere. At the end of the duration, we will still sign another agreement with them that no, you will stay here, keep on, keep, keep on doing the maintenance that means we are actually not importing their technology into our country mm -hmm. which is so somehow very disastrous to us as a continent mm -hmm. then talking about the african continental free trade area there are many countries that have been at a place was being scared of the fact that they will become dumping grounds some are thinking that other countries have a higher production productive capacity more than they do which i believe that the first issue to bring the african continent to a level-headedness as far as production is concerned is that intercooperation between us as a people if we are good in this or if this particular country is good in this why don't we leverage on the opportunity that are good at and then maybe we see how we can bring it into our sector for example if to say that there is an assembling uh, factory maybe in cameroon assembling a uh, mobile phones then we know that okay producing sim cards is a problem we move to, uh, to, to, to to south africa and we know that okay we are experts in producing mobile phones you are experts in producing this other component yes. let's see how we can leverage on it while you are producing this let's produce this so that we can penetrate the african market and then other countries now buy the idea of what we are doing send their engineers or their their their, their, their science or technical students to replicate that into their own countries and then bring competition because in an eco economy where there is no competition we are bound to face consumer exploitation and the biggest threat that the AFCTA uh, is facing now is that fear of consumer exploitation. So now the only way we can actually fight this true effective integration and that effective integration will come from our willingness to collaborate. If we are not willing to collaborate, then there is absolutely nothing we can do as a people, we, are, we can do as a continent to ensure that we realize it. You will see today, one country will ratify it and tomorrow when you carry your goods to arrive the border they give you exorbitant taxes or they even refuse your goods from entering the country or they even refuse you that there are possible excuse there are possibilities they can allow your goods enter and they refuse you a visa from entering into the country which is somehow dangerous to trade so normally if we look at how the african uh, free continental trade area must move ahead we should be able to see the possibilities of african countries collaborating cooperating and working together as one continent and we should also understand that the west understands the fact that uh, africa coming together to create one market will, will pose a big problem to them and will in one way or the other both that uh, cooperation competition within the african economic environment in such a way that maybe foreign goods that are coming into africa will face uh, some difficulties in circulation so now we should see how to stand firm hold that uh, the, 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 this afct area 
as a goal uh, as a gold mine to us as african country, uh, con uh, african uh, countries and we maximize the opportunities that is providing to us and we milk it and ensure that we have a space in the world economic space as far as business is concerned indeed uh, very imperative uh, we shouldn't look at of course uh, the the fact that we are going to maybe uh, uh, surrender autonomy to other countries by allowing them maybe carry out uh, business in our own uh, countries I, uh, of course we have a lot to say but then uh, we have to go uh, we have actually exhausted the time for this program uh, but before we leave i'll, I'll just uh, I'll come back to you mr uh, primus uh, vico for one uh, last statement uh, as we uh, culminate just one minute please all right thank you very much i uh, mm -hmm. appreciate that and yeah talking about the, the the global market right africa africa has to develop um uh, a place in the global ma market it has to 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 find its way into the global market the global market is is very competitive it is a a, a free market where you can you, you can thrive so far as you ha you have the you have the best thing to offer and so uh africa has to develop uh what what is competitive enough to stand in the global market it's it's a free market where uh everybody can can survive so far as you have the best technology so far as you have the best uh, products so that's that's the idea in the global market right that the best of the best uh, survives and that's why you see organizations like um google organizations like microsoft organizations the big the big organizations thriving they have they have a footprint everywhere they have a footprint literally everywhere everywhere and for organizations to be able to compete they need particular areas they need to focus on particular areas um you know that give them competitiveness so take for instance if ai has come and it's it's making waves and uh, organization you can focus on just one particular aspect of that ai and develop it and we haven't had a um, a company for instance in cameroon that is global enough that can really challenge um its competitors out of cameroon and so you see there is that's that's an opportunity for us to be focused so let's say we have agricultural produce prud prud uh, produce if we are producing stuff um agricultural produce how do we make sure that the finished products that we get out of those uh, produce are the best in the world market and so we can market it in in the in the world market and be uh, the best and, and of course grow right scale so uh there's there's a limitation when it comes to scalability in business in africa businesses do not really scale because of uh maybe continuity um reasons i don't i don't know like people are not able to have business continuity strategies that's an important aspect and it comes to deal with scalability and of course the capital and all that but i believe uh, it's time for africa to deal in a square field when it comes to the global market the global global market now is currently led by the west by by you know countries in the west and so i think it's time africa takes its its place in in, in the global market when it comes to uh, mostly uh, agric agricultural produce when it comes to minerals uh, like gold when it comes to uh, you know and and not and not just clandestinely sell its gold or its minerals to, to, to the Western world. So I think uh, if Africa focuses more on production, if it focuses more on transformation and um, to transform needs some of the things that we've mentioned in this discussion. And so I think it's, it's, it's really um, a big challenge for Africa and it's time for us to uh, get up our sleeves and begin to work together to have uh, a united Africa that can really compete in the global space.
for Africa to be united uh, to compete in the global sp uh, space, uh, especially as uh, there are new dimensions uh, in every sphere, political, economic, social, and of course, uh, the time is right for Africa to make uh, a difference, of course, as, it, as far as uh, uh, the, um, the engagement, of course, at the international arena is concerned uh, i want to thank you to gentlemen for the great analysis analysis i beg your pardon or insight uh, regarding our topic for discussions we see that a uh, technology has a lot to offer as far as africa is concerned uh, we just need of course uh, to take that which uh, uh, suits uh, our environment our context of course uh, and see how we can fully implement thank you to Hello viewers for following through and of course we can't go without acknowledging the uh, technicians for ensuring that this program was a great one. Thank you for always trusting the Pan-African television. I beg to leave you now but then I wish you a beautiful moment, uh, a beautiful weekend in the company of uh, transmissions on Africa Media TV. Bye bye and see you some more time. Le monde, c'est nous.